I got the fuel tank out here for the 90 and I did the right thing and I rinsed it with water after spraying it was super clean because it's got an oil coating on it so it kind of broke that down you know you always you get water in, in your tank that's good for it right uh, it's got junkyard markings on it so when they had this thing apart they probably put a different tank in it so we're going to finish scraping this off I'll take a scraper do it scrub it down I hear something rattling around in there which worries me so I might pull the sender out just to take a look if I can't see it through the filler neck here. Which this gasket's in good shape. So we don't have to worry about this. It's got water in it. You know, that's good for it, right? Got out of here in the sun, let it dry off after we scrape it. And then we'll treat the rust. And then we'll put a couple coats of primer on it and that'll be that. Maybe we'll put a layer of fluid film over top of it. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, I got most of the wax scraped off. Fun part's gonna be getting anything to stick to that as far as paint goes, but uh, you can see where the oil coating was still sufficiently present, how, you know, the metal is perfect, you know, because there's no paint, no primer or anything on this, it's just steel. But you can see, especially over here where the coating had kind of wore off, you know, salt and whatever was getting under here, moisture. But uh, this is pretty cool, I thought. This, uh, fuel sender, or not the sender, but the pump, has a sticker on it that says turbo and V6. That's kind of cool. So, yeah. I'm going to hit this with some super clean because it should eat this oil that's on here. And then we'll wipe it down with a rag. Get as much of it off as we can. And then we're going to hit her with primer. Actually, before that, I was going to pop that sender out and take a look. I can hear something rattling in the tank. So I want to see what it is. I notice this needs a new clamp. Clearly, that clamp has seen better days. Yeah, that clamp's no good. Well, here's the uh, sender and the pump, and they're in fantastic condition. They look great. So that's cool. I don't know if they've been replaced before. Considering this has got a tag, I don't know if that's OEM or not. Um, this one's got no stickers on it. Um, they're old, I can tell you that much, but they look good. As for the tank, tank looks great. All that I knocked in there, so I got to get that cleaned out. I'm going to get a rag in there and I'll soak up all that gasoline that's left in there. I can see a little bit of moisture in the bottom with it, probably from me, but the inside of the tank, I'll let you guys take a look. It's perfect. You can see some, uh, I guess, water lines, quote unquote, from where fuel sat at certain points over the years. From who knows when it was sitting at, you know, whatever period of time. But it looks great in there. So we'll uh, spray these down, get these cleaned out, get all that cleaned out, soak the fuel up that's in there. Um, the rattly thing. This is the rattly thing. I'm going to look at some pictures, but I think this goes on the end of the sender and I think it's like a fuel level float or uh, it's a it's for the uh, air vent but I think it goes on just like that and I think it presses on there I don't see anywhere else it would go uh, this is a quick connect goes into a fuel line here's how this thing works by the way so it's got this little uh, I don't know reservoir -y sort of thing here and I think it takes fuel into here. I don't know. I don't I don't quite know. Yeah, so the line right here goes into, and that's an old fuel line by the way, but it's in great shape because it's in here. Um, as we knock more, it goes into the bottom of that thing. And, I, you know, I don't quite understand actually how that works, but it's got a Mopar tag on it. There's a tennis star emblem. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how this works. Takes fuel in there somehow. But, yeah, so it hooks to that. And you see it hooks down there. I don't know. Yeah, you see the water bubbles in there, see them? Anyway, we'll finish getting this cleaned up. We'll get that reassembled. Uh, finish cleaning all this up. Paint the tank. Okay, so that little plastic piece does in fact go on the end of that sender like I figured 
But uh, that goes in pretty easy. There's a trick to getting this one in there. And obviously, so you got to hook up that hose first. And then you kind of slip it. So this is the flat bottom part in kind of like this. And then twist it and go that way. And then it drops in. But to answer my other question, is this OEM? Yes. Yes, it is. That is an OEM sender. Something tells me that it's not original to the vehicle or at least original to this tank. Considering, I mean, it's it's a clean tank, don't get me wrong, because it flash rusts in front of me. Uh, but this guy right here, the sender, is a lot more rusty than, per se, this right here. So... It could be an NOS unit that was put in, you know, 15 years ago, or they bought one at the dealer. Who knows? But that is an OEM. That's an OEM pump. Good. Good. That's going back in there. So, slap our locking ring back in. The usual. Same for pretty much all tanks. Make sure that seal on here is seated right when you put this in, or you're going to have problems. Um... I say that as I didn't verify after I'd slid it in that it was still in place. Um, I'm going to do that, actually. Um, good thing I said that. But, yep, we are, as you can see. There's, there's this guy right here, big rubber seal. He seemed to want to pop out of place, but he's in place, so we're good. Guy okay, slips on. Allegedly, I'm using a brass punch. Right there, that's a brass punch. You know. So we don't create sparks for some reason. And we'll just punch that in just like this one. And it's all in there. Got all the crud out of here. And, uh, yeah, we'll clean up this, like I said. Get as best we can. And we'll try stick some paint to it. Well, stick some rust converter. And then stick some primer. And then stick a different color primer on top of that. And that should seal her up. And then we'll put some fluid film. I'll get a brush. I got a bucket of fluid film. We'll put over top of it. Here's what we ended up with. And you want to know what I ended up doing to get the grease off? Remember those uh, rags? I was well. You don't remember because you weren't there. I used a bunch of rags to soak fuel and stuff out of the bottom of the tank. Well, I had them sitting here. I was gonna throw them away. I'm like, wait a minute. And I used those to clean this off, and gasoline dissolved it perfectly. So it's pretty good as I put my greasy fingers all over it, but. That should, something should stick to that anyway. That's weird. Uh, so I'm working back here. Before we can put anything back together, we have to deal with those broken or cut off exhaust manifold bolts. So I did the right thing and I didn't want to deal with it while I was up here. So I took the manifold out, which you can get out without touching anything else, as you can see. So what I had to do is unbolt the alternator because the last 10 mil bolt is stuck behind the lower bracket is kind of just sitting up there. Then I got these two nuts off, which were 9 16 was able to get it with a half inch uh, deep well socket with a six inch extension and a big ratchet. And you're able to get behind them as long as you can kind of tap it. You can tap it on with a hammer. You can, even, you can get in there just barely, but you can get those off. And then it's five 10 mil bolts and then one stud that is a star torx whatever and the torx broke off so i vice gripped it and that those threads are for the support bracket that comes from the manifold to the alternator bracket here um i think i've got a good stud on that spare motor if it comes out otherwise that bracket just isn't going back on or i can try tap it we'll see but we can't put this back on anyway because the star is broke. I'll try to get the other one off that other motor and we'll use that stud instead. 
but uh, it gets out. I don't know why this is the only one that was tight. The other ones came out with a quarter inch ratchet and a 10 mil. I don't know why this one was so tight. Whatever. Anyway, then you have to get the plugs for one and three out. And then you can just barely sneak it up there, get the edge of the manifold up past that lip, and it will wiggle out and then drop down. You have just enough room. Anyway, that's the first time I've taken one out from the back like that. And you can do it, I guess. So the surface of the heads look pretty good. So I'll just clean them up with a razor, maybe, and maybe some scotch Brite or something. And uh, I don't know, I didn't look at the manifold. Let's look at the manifold. Actually, it looks really good. So I don't think I'll go try to put a gasket or anything on that. I think I'll just bolt that back down after we clean it up. Um, lots of carbon, you know, the usual. I'll have to find one of these gaskets, so that'll be the fun part. Cause he, let's see if we can get this guy. Yeah, he's loose. Um, the gasket actually looks pretty good. I'm not gonna lie to you. But I'll see if I have one. Um, this one does not have EGR, as you can see. And that's how it be. So it's got the boss for it, and it's just built in. They didn't drill it. See if that gasket get him out of the way. So we got to deal with these. And as you can see, well, so funny enough, that nut looks like it was spinning and then it snapped because it wouldn't spin anymore. And then this side looks like it's still tight. I probably just gave up and cut it. Yeah, because I thought I remember I had one on the run just a little bit and then it immediately broke and it was probably this one. So, we'll probably cut these off flush here, pound these out. So, actually, both were spinning loose in the manifold, but as you can see, this is what I was talking about. So, I cut them back from this side, cut the nuts off. See how it's beveled here to fit the manifold? So, I, that's kind of a, like a weird proprietary sort of bolt. So, I don't know what I'm going to do to do fix that. Maybe that other motor's got... Good manifold studs. I'll go look. We'll see. Otherwise, I think I'll just drill them out for bigger bolts. Or put smaller bolts in. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, I know what I'm going to do now. They literally sell the kit at O'Reilly. It's 15 bucks. You get both new bolts and the springs and the nuts and everything. So, duh. That's what we're going to get. Uh, before I go get that, I'm going to see if I can get the bolt with the reverse torques on it out of that other manifold and go from there. Hello, cat. Well, I got the uh, parking brake junction pulled out, knocked off the loose rust. Got it rust primed right now, and then I will prime it with that flat dark gray when that's dry. But I got, obviously got the alternator back in, got the belt back on, which means we, under here, I got the manifold back on. Oh, I got to plug the O2 sensor in it. Clearly, I missed that. New gasket for the crossover. I got the surface cleaned up for the uh, on the head and on the exhaust. Got that bolted back up tight. Uh, obviously, we do not have that bracket anymore. It is just six bolts and not that one stud. Was not able to get another one, and that is what it is. And everything's tightened down. Good to go. Got the plugs back in too. And obviously, we have holes to mount the cat to and the rest of the exhaust. So that is achieved. Tank's dry, ready to go. I gotta grab some miscellaneous brackets and start uh, getting them cleaned up and primed and painted. And then I'm gonna go through the hardware, see what I got, start bolting up exhaust shielding. And uh, then I'm gonna roll the axle out here and start rebuilding that. But it's gonna start putting pieces back on finally well technically we just did how about nothing else comes off moving forward now that thing cook for a minute.
time, and many curse words later, there is all of the hardware from the old Leaf Spring shackles. And Leaf Springs, I should say. Um, as I trip and fall. Alright, I did not have a good time getting all that apart, but I got everything apart. I got everything cleaned up here. I had to pressure wash the front concrete. That was so bad. I did not have a good time getting that apart today. It took me way too long, too much effort. And frankly, I'm quite pissed off. Uh, for 10 trillion different reasons. But, well, I had the pressure washer out. I pressure washed the axle and got all that cleaned off too because it was so full of oil and whatever. But I think what I got to do kind of got to the point where I got to get something else done here before I finish off the day. Pop these tires off. I'm going to disassemble pull all the brakes off, strip it right down to the axle. I think that's how I'm going to assemble it. I'm going to try, see if I can bolt the leaf springs up independent of the axle. But because they're sprung, I think it's going to make it difficult. And I might have to tension the spring with a jack. Hopefully I can do that and get them lined up and bolted in. But we'll, we'll see how that goes. But when I assemble it, I want to assemble it with just the axle and then bolt everything to it. And I think having all this stuff off will make it easier for me to sand down this axle and treat it and paint it as well. And all this parking brake equipment I can worry about after all of that's all bolted up. I think it'll make it easier for reassembly. This assembly it was way easier to take it off in one piece. But reassembly, it's another story. Not to mention these tires are coming off and they're not going back on. These two rear tires actually came with the van and they're getting pretty weather checked as you can see here. They made it the 2,000 miles we have put on the van, or 26 or 2,500, whatever. Here, I'll tell you what it was. Um, so we had 273 something, and we're at 275 something. So we've got, and the trip meter says 96 miles. So we've got 2,096 miles on it. They've served their purpose for now, but we've got new tires, new rims, and everything. So they'll stay as a set, but I don't want to drive them too much longer. They're not that bad. This one says wobbly tire for some reason. Probably because it's wobbly. I don't remember at this point, but I wrote it down. Gas tank looks really good. These brackets turned out pretty nice. It's good. It's got that dark, flat, flat dark gray is what Rustle M calls it. This right here. I need to get more of this too. So we painted the underbody in this color flat light gray and then all of the pieces that attach and the wheel arches we painted flat dark gray i think it's gonna look pretty good for an underbody even got the brake box all cleaned up painted uh we did make some progress today despite it being what it was we got this all disassembled everything's out of my shed over here and i got the uh i get two vehicles in there now
Well, there, axle stripped down. Everything came apart okay. Uh, I got the brakes put back together so I wouldn't lose anything. They're just sitting over there, but it's going to be so much easier not having to deal with any of that when we're, one, cleaning this all up, and two, putting it back together. It'll also give me the opportunity to uh, clean up the backing plates on these brakes when I get them apart. But like I said, they're all here in one piece, so I don't have to worry about them now. Um, yeah, we'll have to clean this off, get this ground down. You know, this causes this causes alignment issues, by the way, because it's going to rust jack, it looks like, and it's going to cause it to wobble in one direction. So there's an alignment issue right there. It doesn't take much. Yeah, look at this. Hopefully that's not a shim. I don't think it is. I think it's literally just rust. <laughs> yeah, look at that. I hope that's not a shim or anything. If it is, it isn't now. I think that's corrosion. Sure hope. That might be a shim. I don't know. That's made of metal right there. Well, it ain't anymore. Yeah, cool. Or it's part of the backing plate. I don't know here. How does this look? I don't know. What is that? Corrosion? I think it's just corrosion. Yeah, we gotta get these cleaned up. That can cause issues. Otherwise, these are pretty... I mean, they're in one piece, but... They're pretty well. Oh, you know, plugging that up, that's good for it, too. I should uh, screw the brake lines to them. I have them sitting over here. Um, yeah, we'll get that cleaned up. There, it's... I swear, now, no more taking stuff apart. I, I swear. I swear that's it. <laughs> it just seems I say that, and then I'm taking something else apart. Oh, boy. I got the axle ground down best I'm going to get it, which is pretty good. And I'm going to hit it with the rust converter primer, and then hit it with the regular primer, just like we did everything else. Well, I got all the hardware for the van cleaned up, and then also I got the fuel lines right here. But, over here, I had the brake lines plumbed up in place for the most part. Got them to about there. I need to find the one bracket that's still good to hold that last line up, but they're in. They're on. Not perfect. Uh, I gotta do some fine tuning. Once they are actually bolted in up here, I gotta get the brackets uh, painted quick for up here. And then, that's that's it, they'll be good. But the brackets bolt in right here and right there. And then there's a little lock, uh, bracket here in the center there that will hold that brake line in place. There's supposed to be one right there too, but we're not gonna use that one because the brake fitting will hold the line up good enough. Otherwise, uh, I got, I'm going to get the exhaust shielding bolted up. i got to find some washers because some of the exhaust shielding is a little rotted out. And then i got to find that pigtail for the uh, fuel uh, pump and everything. I think it's stuffed in the frame over here somewhere. Get him out. Get, get ready. Uh, run the fuel lines. Uh, I gotta find, hopefully I got enough brackets to hold the lines up, I should, out of all of it. But I gotta make those fuel lines quick. Quick. And then, once we get those plumbed in place, we'll get the fuel tank over here and we'll get that strapped up. I got new fuel straps somewhere, I think, for it. And then, I think once that's up, I gotta get all this bracket tree put up right here. For, like, the spare tire and stuff. Get all that stuff bolted in. And I think that's about... Oh, and, the, and then I can do the exhaust. And once we do the exhaust, get all the fuel lines and stuff, we can put gas in it, get the fuel filler in it, put in. Put the plastic over this for now. I don't think I'm getting to this body work this year. Uh, we got the underbody done this year, I think. And then next year it's going to be this work. I think I'm just running out of time. It's October 1st now. And I got some other stuff that needs done as well. So we got to get this thing back together, get it drivable get it aligned I think if, if we can get time for that otherwise we'll do it next spring but I gotta get it so it can drive run and drive it a little bit make sure it's okay the rear suspension's all right now make sure all that works all the lines are good and then it gets parked for the winter 
and then we come back next spring and then I guess we'll do body work but hey we got the structural stuff taken care of all the hard stuff here rest of this can be done with the body together you know so that's where I'm at right now all right at the new lines well new those are the copper lines we ran last year got them all plumbed back in uh, I even got the soft lines on here got them capped off and they are gravity bled so lucky me I capped off the reservoir because I was smart and we still have fluid in it and we got her going so I got it on all the clips here got it they're, they're bent mostly straight they're not touching they're not rubbing on anything right here where they go up here there's supposed to be a bracket here to hold the one line we don't have that anymore so what I got here is they're next to each other took a piece of rubber zip tied it together there they're secure got this bracket here there's a piece of rubber in there as an insulator uh, but the brackets kind of sideways I'm gonna have to I think fix that actually or just do that there no longer a problem Anyway, it's up there, it's screwed in on both sides. You know, they're, they're secure, they're tight, they ain't moving anywhere. That's gonna be the brake lines. Well, I got over it, and I went and I bent me a line. This is the one line, if anything, had to be replaced, This the back part of the fuel line. As you can see, it's already been patched once, and it's pretty cracked up and rotten. So, uh, I'd say for just a quick bend, that's not too bad. We'll have to fine tune this section here, because that's where it goes into the fuel, filter but and then whatever but I'd say it's pretty close right now what's funny is I guess I didn't remember this didn't have a flare on this side it just had a big crimp so I'm gonna put a flare on this end because why not right but yeah see how the line is it's it's about ready to blow right there so I want to put a flare on that end I might hold off on flaring this end I think I got it a little long and I did that on purpose because you know obviously but I yeah see it's a it's a little long and it's mostly because I couldn't get my bend as well as the other ones bent without kinking the line I well because then all it's going to be is when we fine tune it up there it's just going to be a shorter hose to the fuel filter I might just flare that and then we'll correct if needed yeah, I'm gonna flare both sides here. And then I think I'll build, I I might not. I'm gonna sand down the other end of the main line. I might just run it, you know, it, it, they look fine. But the other two lines are solid all the way through. So I might bend them all. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. It, it's got some fun bends going up to the very end there because it's gotta go around the motor and stuff and along the frame rail channel thing but hey we we're, we're doing it we're getting there okay i've been pretty busy here so i've got all of my fuel lines bent currently i've got them all zip tied to the old lines that's how i got them bent i think we did pretty pretty a okay i messed up one right here i put a kink in it right here i had to cut it a little short but i don't think that's going to make a difference i couldn't get these sharp bends by hand Notice a little bit of a kink there we were able to get out, but I'll probably fudge it and I'll kind of go like that. And this goes into just a rubber line anyway. Just got to be close. So next I got to cut all these zip ties that I put in it. Then zip tie all the new lines together. From the factory they were just twist tied like, like, like metal bread ties basically. And then a uh, bunch of metal clamps holding them together on the body. But then I've also got... Finally, the exhaust shielding or the, yeah, the exhaust shielding up. So you can see we got washers and all this stuff. And up here there's studs and we broke one off in the body. And so what I've got going here, something fancy because it also broke the little sheet metal nut. I've got, this is a washer for a steering column for I believe a third gen. And a different style uh, sheet metal washer. And so this kind of bites and grabs it's bigger, and this still grabs this thread that's here. It'll work without the one there, just fine. And rattling, it's on there way better than it was. So we're looking pretty there. So yeah, I'm gonna get the fuel lines ready. I uh, got all the clamps ready, I just gotta find all the screws for them. And then we'll get the fuel lines plumbed up. We'll uh, hook them up up there, so then they're secured up there, make sure that's all ready. Make sure they're in about the right spot for the tank. Then I just got to put a new soft line on the tank. 
Then we can bring the tank over and put it up. And then we can go get fuel. And we should be able to at least fire it up. And make sure the fuel system and everything works and no, we got no leaks. Well, got the lines all flared. I almost forgot to do that. This kit's a lot bulkier. I don't like it like I like the Capri tools, but... I, my, I don't have a Capri tool that does 5 sixteenths, just 3 sixteenths and quarter, but I did them all with this thing. I say they're good enough for what we're doing, which is putting rubber hose over and putting a high-pressure hose clamp. They're not the best flares I've ever seen, but one of them is a single flare, too. One of them I messed up. Um, but they're all double flared, except that one. They look okay. They will do what we're trying to do. So now I'm just going to piece them together, get them all clocked right, and uh, zip time together. Well, apparently my bending skills are pretty good because the lines lined up damn perfectly. The ends got a little tweaking and whatnot, but that was how I left them. I left them long even. So all that is is just change the size of the rubber hose. Just wanted, didn't want to be too short, but yeah, look at that. Lined up perfect. Lines are clocked right here for the fuel filter. Uh, I'm just going to slide up under the truck now. Or did I say truck? A van and get it kind of roughly into place there and then I'll start getting the clamps which are right there in that pile and start uh, clamping it up. Well, look at that. We have fuel lines plumbed up. Got most of the brackets in, I think. Uh, one is probably in a spot where it, it wasn't originally, but it is now. Uh, got the lines up here for the fuel filter. Um, right where that fuel filter goes, Used to be a hole for the bracket, but now it's plated over with my plate. And the great part is it's in a spot where I think there's two plates. So we'll have to drill through that to come up with some sort of mounting, I think, for it. But uh, we'll cross the road when we get to it. So, got it. Hooked up here. That bracket was a pain to get in because I had to get the lines just right. And then because I double flared them instead of like bubble flared them. Uh, they were a little hard to get the lines over top, but I did. And they're all clamped in. And, uh, we're all good there. So it's all hooked up here. I just gotta get the fuel filter in and then bend the lines, get the tank ready. Well, next morning, I got this up here. I just I had to pre-drill a hole in my new plates here. And then I put a, a inch-long self-tapper in it with a washer. And I think that looks pretty good. That doesn't look so bad. And it's up above the rail still, so it's protected quote unquote but uh it was fun getting these little pieces on here because my lines are longer so i'd use shorter rubber and i mean they're like right there but hey i think that's i think that's pretty good i'm okay with that anyway especially considering we can't mount it up or you know lost our hole it's all custom here okay got the fuel tank all refurbished got all new lines on it i had to go pick up three sixteenths and quarter as well as 5 ace, which this was originally 9 16 but they didn't have it, so we went with the 5 ace. It does the same, it's close enough. Got this little guy on here. This is to keep it from rubbing in the frame where it passes through. I had to remake this line this morning, and I did it right and I actually put bubble flares on it instead of a double flare that fits easier with the hoses. Got a new clamp on, or a new uh, rubber cap on this with a zip tie. Got the lines all routed, got the clips back on here. This is all tightened down. These are all tight. Now I just got to clear out some space there, get some foam mats down, uh, get the jack, roll it under there, and we'll uh, put her in place. It's gone. We come over here, I've been busy. And it's up there. So we got it installed with the new straps and new mounting hardware. Got the lines all hooked up here, got the vent hose hooked up here, even got the cables run out the side, there's the uh, vent hookup, or for like the tank pressure check or whatever. Got that all run through, got this up here and secured. So tank's in, now I just gotta get that fuel filler in, and as is typical aftermarket style, it looks like we're gonna have fitment issues with the filler. I'm going to try, see how it looks now that I've got the tank in. And just to make sure it lines up. Because it looked pretty dang close to the other one. But it looks like when I kind of just test fit it a little bit ago that we're going to have fitment issues. So, 
we will see what we're gonna do about that. I'm gonna try to get it in anyway. And then I can put some gas in this thing. At least we can hear it run. Let's hear it run with uh, that being the exhaust, the cat loosely hooked up. And we'll hear it run, and then once we hear it run, and make sure that's all good. Then I'll go through the effort. I'll wire up the exhaust, get that all in here. Well, the filler's in. Fitman is, you know, perfect as usual. At least we don't have any, you know, metal touching here. It clears. I only had to bend this one down a little bit with the channel locks to get it to not rub up here. Uh, we've got three or four screws, and technically four, but it broke off here because this is not set right. It's uh, The angle on this is too far up. I got these in. I had to pry it down, get them to line up. Then I got all four started, snug these two up to hopefully pull tension off of this, and clearly it you know, didn't do that exactly. So it pulled this one. So I left this one, you know, a hair loose so it doesn't do that to this one that holds this guy in. We do have a new fuel cap though, off of, I believe that 363,000 mile 94 Plymouth Grand Voyager. So thank you, that was very nice. So this is new, this is all new, this is all in. I'm gonna fill it up with gas now and I just hope it runs. All right, are we leaking anything? Hope not. Looks dry to me. Everything looks good. We'll know once we actually prime the system. So, Pop the hood here. I do believe I'm gonna have to tighten these battery cables. They're kind of not. They're they're pretty poor. Um, they need they need replaced. Bad actually. Um, there's power. I'll come in here and I'll tighten these down. We'll prime the fuel system up. This is brand new here. Just replace that. We'll make sure we don't got any leaks. And then we'll fire it up. All right, are you all ready for the first start in two months? I think it's been, I think it's been at least two months. All right, let's get up in here. Oh, we're already um, on. Um, unfortunately, I don't see a fuel reading. That scares me a little bit. But I do hear this go off, but we're pretty out of fuel anyway. Primed. Oh. Doing good. It ain't got no gas in it. There it goes. Prime it up a little more. Put more fuel in it because I don't. I want to make sure that works. Listen to that bad boy. Straight out the cat. No fuel leak here. No leaks here. Uh, I don't see anything dripping off the filter area. No leaks back here. Sounds good. Besides the fact it's a race car. I think we're out of gas. I truly think we're out of gas. Let me add more to it. I think I'm still out of gas. I think I ran it so low, it's like barely got any.
trailer that came off empty. I, I couldn't see. Um, yes, it did come off empty. So we're just that far out of gas. There we go. She was just out. It took three gallons to get to empty. Good to know, actually. Ah, that sounds good, it's got gas now. <laughs> well, it runs. It needs a lot more gas though, but that's enough for now. It's enough to run it. I'm gonna let it idle get up to temp here. It's sat for two months. And then we'll get that exhaust bolted up probably weld it on too actually do it right this time at least tack it on there so it you know doesn't come loose sounds good <laughs> all right so we're an eggplant as you can see we've got 172 611 on the clock 609 p.m. and I got some exhaust tape and I got some of the exhaust bolt and springs um, if you remember we had those I have the exhaust bolted up right now I'll show you when we get back and I get it finished up I uh, tightened one too tight and actually snapped off the threads because I'm smart. Anyway, so I went back to where I got more. I also dumped off the used oil and I grabbed two gas cans. We're going to fill those up so we can top off the uh, fuel, add more to it because it's pretty much empty. But uh, yeah, I got the exhaust. Currently, it's uh, welded up actually. Everything's up in place. It's installed. I uh, My welds aren't the greatest, so I put some exhaust seal and joint sealer around it. That's currently drying, and we're gonna wrap it in exhaust tape, and that should be all right. It's sturdy, it ain't going anywhere. I rocked on it pretty hard, but you never know. You never know, so. I do believe that I am done with the exhaust. I guess I'll show you the finished product. I haven't shown you since any of it, actually. So, as you can see, cat's up. There's two bolts and springs and stuff up there. We got a muffler. We have a resonator and we have an exhaust and I did weld this whole connection right there so because I used to have those crappy stupid u-bolt brackets that squeeze the muffler I had to cut this muffler or cut it off pretty close to the muffler to get these two to mesh together so I couldn't put a bracket on if I wanted to and before it was super loose anyway it didn't fit right you know as they do sometimes so I welded that all up and then I did the same thing here where this pipe goes into here. I actually, yeah, I cut the pipe, slid it in, welded that up. And then this one, so in between here, there's a an adapter bracket to get these two to mesh. Because this is off of like a like a second gen caravan. Notice my hammering here to get those two to fit. You know, that's mint right there. I, there's a bracket here. So this, where this uh, pipe goes into this bracket here was already still stuck together and had the bend on it here so what I did is I knocked off some of my old exhaust uh, seal and I tacked it up a couple spots you know just so it was welded and then I put the clamp back but this is all welded up that's all welded up and then I filled my crappy crappy uh, wire feed welds with exhaust seal and that sat while we went and got that other bolt up there and now I have wrapped it in exhaust tape to hide my crappy job. I mean, I ran it already and it didn't leak at all, but you know, just as an added measure, we'll add the exhaust seal and the exhaust tape and it looks better. It doesn't look as crappy with all that exhaust seal all over, but it looks pretty good. So I haven't heard it run since I got that guy all up there because it still had a leak because I only had one bolt up there. So I haven't heard it run with the entire exhaust sealed up like this. So I figure we'll try it if the battery isn't dead, because that's been on. So it should, in theory, run. And then I'm going to let it get a operating top. I said that earlier, and then I'm like, wait, I'm doing exhaust work. Let's not do that. I'd say it sounds pretty good. Rev it. Is 
Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Let's get down here and feel for leaks. I hear a leak up there. Yeah, I hear a bit of a leak up there. I bet you that'll go away when it warms up. I bet you that donut's not seated right. But I don't feel any leaks up here. I don't feel any leaks here. That sounds pretty good coming out of here. I definitely hear a little bit up there though, I think. I'm gonna feel around. It's getting hot already. That might be what I hear. Remember, this gasket's new. We bolted it into the manifolds, and this is all new. It could be leaking out of the manifold for all I know. Let's let it run, see if it quiets down, and then, you know, after a couple heat cycles, we can go in and tighten these bolts and stuff, you know? But it sounds pretty good. Yeah, look at that. Just gonna have to operating temp. I just cleaned off the windshield and stuff to make it look less abandoned. Both windshields, actually. But, got plenty of oil pressure. It's actually getting warm sitting here. Wonder if that thermostat's a little sticking. See that? We'll see, I'll keep an eye on it. We're charging. Oh, the rear wiper is still on, literally. There, stay off. Um, got over a quarter tank of fuel. I dumped another five gallons in it. Yeah, it's getting warm. Let me spin this around. I checked the hose, it was getting warm. My thermostat open up. There it's going down. There we go. After they sit, sometimes they do that. Your first time you run them, you always want to watch that stuff. It's just because it was sitting for a little while. Get some coolant flow, and that probably kick the thermostat. It's like, oh, it's warm now. Let me open. I think the rad fans would have kicked on though. But it's going down. Charging looks good. Everything looks good. The only light on is the door jar light. There it goes. Mm hmm. In fact, I think the fans are on now. I think I hear it. Yep. Hear it? Kicked on now. Yep. Spin it away. Not like we're leaking anything. Looks okay. Yep, there she kicked off. Boom. Cooling system repaired. All right, notice? Door's shut nicer now that we've got this body kind of not flexing anymore. Yep, looks good now. Very good. I'm gonna work on right now. I'm gonna look up some pictures and try to remember how these brackets go up here for the spare tire stuff. Bolt these all in, and that is literally as far as I can go. The only thing left, I guess, this plastic splash shield that I was probably gonna leave out until we get to this, but I guess I could put it back in, is the rear axle stuff, which I've got some brackets coming in tomorrow, some, some shackles. They aren't right, but I think I can use the pieces off of them to make it work. We're gonna see, it's the closest I could find. Uh, we'll, we'll go from there, otherwise I think I'm gonna have to like reach out to a machine shop or something and have them make them, you know? That or I just ordered the ones that are six weeks out, which is not ideal, really. I don't know, we'll see. And then, you know, I could always bolt up what we have. They're, they're shot, but they'd be enough to let me move it, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Yep, just bolt all these up and that's it. And we're done. Runs good, no fuel leaks. Exhaust isn't hitting anything. Fuel lines aren't hitting anything. Everything seems good underneath and it looks fresh. Too bad I didn't paint that exhaust bracket, but I ran out of paint in time. But everything looks fresh underneath. 
you know, it's funny. I'm going to get this thing and have an alignment done. They're like, look at this rusty pile of crap. And they're going to lift up the lift. And they're going to be like, what the hell? <laughs> they're like, who, who wasted their time on this? But here we are. It's a work in progress, you know. That's that's how it goes when you you know you don't have all the time or money in the world is you do it in pieces like this, but you got to keep working otherwise your stuff sits and then it becomes dilapidated and then it slowly kind of um, erodes or withers away I guess is a good word to put it. But if you keep working at it and you do it in sections like this, look at that we've got a running van again. And all the structural rust is fixed, you know, new exhaust, all new brake and fuel lines, etc., etc. Obviously, we've already been through the, you know, engine and transmission service, all of that stuff. Uh, we do got motor mounts to put in it, though. You know, and the interior is all done. The only thing left on this van, after we're done here with this new rear suspension and then the motor mounts, is the bodywork. That's it. That's all that's left, besides driving it. So we gotta hunt ourselves down that bumper, and then we gotta do the bodywork actually, which I think is gonna be 2025 is the way it's looking right now. But then again, I don't mind how it looks. It looks kind of ratty, and I, I don't mind that at all. I think that's gonna do it for tonight. I might pop in real quick when I'm done with that, but. Uh, I think we're gonna call it probably I'll cut this if I if it's not but I think this is gonna be the end of the episode until we figure out that whole leaf shackle thing so uh, thank you guys for sticking around with me here and as we continue to work on blue van and restore it actually it kind of is turning into like a full resto like to be honest with you so all right just as I said I got it all bolted up here that's how the brackets go this one so this goes on first and then this one kind of slips over top of it. And then these two bolts are shared between this bracket and this guy. And there's two little sheet metal screws up there. And then there's one here. And I think if yours hasn't had a custom bumper welded on, there's two more screws going into the rail there. But ours is welded to that. So that's all done. So I have spent a significant amount of time here, but I'll be darned if we don't have a leaf shackle for a 90 caravan. So we had obviously our old shackles that were junks. So we had two of those. We bought two of these Speedway shackles that were for like a Ram van, like a, like a big van, but this piece was the right bend and the smaller one was close and then we got really lucky at the junkyard and we managed to pull a shackle off a of 92 or 93 i think it was 92 but we snapped the threads off the smaller one otherwise we would have had a perfectly good shackle like the the bracket piece to use with the studs between all of those parts i have enough to make two shackles Here's our one shackle here. Obviously, we have the mount. I've got new bushings in here, and this guy is here. This guy right here is the junkyard shackle. This is the junkyard shackle right here with this bracket and this guy. I pop the broken one out right here, and I have in here the shorter one off one of the new shackles. And I tacked him in here because it's kind of a loose fit, the press in his here. So he's tacked in. And inside of here, I have three of these washers that I drilled out to fit perfectly over to the end, which is right here, that lip. And three of them gets you to the right length of this shoulder. And I had them drilled out, and then I sat here, and I ground them down <laughs> with a grinder because I don't have like a one of those little uh, bench like bench grinders. So I had them on a stud, and I had them rotating, and I ground them down. That took me a lot of time. But I was just sitting here listening to the Jets game or whatever, football. 
kind of half listening to it and listening to music. Anyway, for what I'm doing tonight, that worked. And as you can see, we have a shackle here. Now for the other side, I was able to save one of the long studs. So what I'm trying to avoid was having to grind this shoulder down and thread this on either of these, and I managed to avoid it. So we had the good one from the junkyard, and now we have one good one from ours. It's a little pitted, but the diameter is okay, and the bushings don't have any play. So we had that. I had to fix the threads on the end. As you can see, it's a little ground down there. I had to take a file to it, and it'll spin a nut on it just fine now. And now what we have to do is the same thing with three of those washers. And then I've got another bracket. As you can see, we have the new bracket end, and I press this one in with my uh, Harbor Freight press. That seemed to work okay as long as I supported this spot here. I had it kinked a little bit. I bent it back. It's fine. So now all I got to do is grind down three more of those, and we have both of the shackles made for the 90 Caravan. And it saves significant time of having to dremel down that stupid shoulder. So your best bet here is go find a set of leaf springs or shackles from a junkyard van. Have a junkyard pull them for you, I don't know, that aren't rotten. But we didn't have that luxury, and here we are. And we managed to make one out of a couple. So cool. Yeah, I'm going to get the last three ground down. Then I'll have this ready tonight. Then I'm going to – tomorrow i got to bounce between – uh, a couple different projects about slipped on you there about or slipped on myself I about uh spoiled that but uh, I got a couple different projects I'm working on and I'll hopefully get the leaf springs mounted up under the vehicle uh next we got to find her the last piece we got to find is we got to go bring these the old u-bolts there in here we got to bring them into like O'Reilly or Napa or something and get some that kind of matches that's fine, and they'll be longer. We'll just cut them down, but we need to get U-bolts so we can bolt the axle to the leaf springs once they're in the vehicle, and then that van is done. As far as underbody work goes, it'll be drivable again. How about that? That's going to be it for me tonight for you guys. Like I said, I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to grind down three more of these washers, and uh, that'll be great. Okay, so I just painted these with engine paint because I was too lazy to sand any of the rust off, and that stuff sticks to anything. I went to O'Reilly today, and we found the closest U-bolt kit that is the vaguely the right shape, and it's not right. So these are too long, but that's that's normal. You cut your U-bolts to fit once you have them on. But my threads don't go far enough down, and I thought, well, maybe I can thread them, but when they made these, they took off material so it's lower in the threads. As you can see, I hit it, but there isn't enough material to bite. So we're going to have to put in like a spacer so we can catch threads with the new nuts when we put the uh, axle on the leaves. But my plan is here is to put the front shackles on and bolt up the leaves lightly and, you know, have them hang like this. And then we'll raise them up and hopefully we can bolt the new rear shackle to the leaf and raise it up into place and hopefully it'll be close because you know they're going to want to spring so hopefully we can get them to line up with the bolts on the body so we can get the leaves up and then once the leaves are up we'll raise the axle and bolt the axle to the leaves with the new u-bolts and stuff We'll see how well that goes. I am just going to do it off camera because these things are heavy as heck. And I'm going to be fighting with it. And you'll see it in like... Hey, look. Progress. We have the first leaf spring in. Actually went in okay. The hardest part was getting those four started. <laughs> Ladybug. And, uh, you know, just because this thing weighs a lot. If I had a jack under here kind of balancing it. Got those started, then got those started. Uh, with the paint I sprayed it, I recommend uh, that you tap those threads first. I didn't do it on this side. I'm going to do it on the other side, just to chase those threads, clean them up. But they they snugged up okay over here. It's in. Hopefully it's straight, because there's no adjustment. It is what it is. Um, it 
should be in theory. Lines up with the bump stop pretty much and I kind of eyeballed where to put those so I think we're close enough. Now I'm gonna get the other side done just the same and then I'm gonna actually I'm gonna pull the axle out now. There's a couple spots I gotta finish priming it and I have the primer now so I'll let that dry while I'm putting the other axle up or the other leaf up and then by the time we're ready to go to put the axle in it should be dry enough to put in. Well, both leaf springs are up, so that's cool. I guess I'll get the axle over here now, figure out how to get that in here. I'll have to move the tires, roll the jack in that way. I don't know, we'll see. But it's in, we're almost there. Look at that, it's got an axle under it. Oh, that was a kind of a pain, had it balanced on, on the jack and then had to use the shackles to kind of, or the U-bolts. Uh, to kind of hold it while I twisted it because the way the axle is it tips this way because of weight and gravity so you can see right here what kind of space are we're gonna looking at needing here so I'll have to see what I can come up with real quick what I can come up with and find eight of the exact same uh, <laughs> there's a there's a there's a twist to that and that I need to have eight of them so I can't just have one random bolt I gotta have eight matching bolts I get it. It's got to look decent. Come on, we went through all this effort. Let's at least try to make it the same. But it looks good with the shiny new uh, U-bolts on there. And then once we get them bolted up, we'll just kind of just cut them all off, you know, with the death wheel. But that's that's standard procedure. Looking pretty good, though. We're almost to the point where we can get jack stands up under the axle instead of the bumper. But I think we'll leave it up like that until we have the brakes done. Cause I gotta run the parking brake uh, sprint or uh, cables and hook them back up to the box there. But we're we're getting ahead of ourselves there. We gotta get this all bolted up first. Been a little busy. Got the backing plates painted up here. I took a wire brush to them and just brushed them. Brand new brake drums, as you can see. And then I'm getting ready to pull these bearings apart again and repack them with the right grease, cause the grease I used was not good grease before we ruin those bearings like we did with the 93. But uh, yeah, we're getting there. I'm waiting on some spacers to come in for that. And uh, then we'll have that together. All right, so I just got done chasing the threads and all these bolts and the threads inside the axle. Look how nice these guys spin on now. That was worth it. And then uh, this is what we came up with the spacers. So we ended up using a washer, a big nut and a washer. And then obviously we got our lock washer and our nut that'll tighten up. That's a little overkill, but guess what? That'll work. That's what we're doing on both sides. So I'm going to start snugging these up, get the axle in place, tighten those up. And then I'm going to get the backing plates bolted on. And then we're going to pack some wheel bearings. Well, here we go. Driver's side. It's all in. I cut them and then I took the impact to them. And they're in there tight. It's snug. I don't see any air between the leaf... Uh, Bring in the axle like mount. Oh, that one's all done too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Looks good, right? 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 No. A uh, little too much Ooga Doogas on the very, very last one right here. And it popped. And that was the end of that. And had to pull it back off. Now I got to go to O'Reilly and get another one of those. This is, by the way, this is what they we ended up measuring was the closest one that they had in stock. They had these on the shelf in like the trailer section. So uh, now I gotta go to a different O'Reilly because I bought both of the ones at my regular O'Reilly or the closest one to me. There's there's two that are about vaguely the same distance. So I gotta go to the other one and take one of theirs. And I guess I'll have a spare one now. Otherwise it was, uh, was in, but before I go, I think I'm gonna put the hub on the driver's side, bolt that up. That way, you know, I'll clean up and not get as dirty the next time whatever I don't know I might just well I don't want to bolt this hub up until I'm in there because I gotta cut off the bottoms of it okay we'll go a little easier this time though <laughs> I went too far and I knew it too and then it just, you, you went you went you went and it got tight tight snap and that was it what do you do all right it's update time so it's dark now we've got this hub on here bolted on don't have the like the spindle or like the bearing hub or anything. I got to pack those yet, but I got the brakes on lines on both sides. That side's bled. I'm waiting on this side to gravity bleed. But it looks like it's getting close. I see fluid. Shocks are on. 
parking brake cables are ran, but they're not they're not hooked up to the box. That's what I'm about to do. But over on the passenger side earlier, I uh, over torqued that one. I think I told you guys that, but we got a new one in there. It's in and everything. Got this parking brake cable here. Like I said, this side's on. Everything's on. Just got to hook up the parking brake cable assembly, pack the bearings, put the tires on, put it on the ground. Well, parking brake assembly's up. I got it all in. I'll adjust it after I get the wheel hubs put back together so I can press the brake and stuff. But it's just a half inch bolt. You just turn in and out on that stud. Sorry, I'm not really like time lapsing or anything. So hopefully you guys are okay with this, but I'm kind of just hammering getting this thing done today. Or tonight, I suppose. As you can see, it's running. I've bled the rear brakes, made sure they work, topped off the fluid. I got the parking brake, made sure that was adjusted and working, popped the cap back on that. I hung the parking brake cable for the passenger side. We have one bolt up in the frame, and then we've got a zip tie on the back over there, and that is that. Uh, we still got to torque the wheel bearings or set the preload or whatever you want to call it. I got to do that next here. Now that I got the drums on here and spinning, so I can spin them and tighten them. And then I'm going to bring the tires upstairs. We're going to pop the two tires in the back. I will put you on the tripod as I lower it back onto her back feet for the first time in months. And then we'll back it off the ramps, jack up the front end, and we'll change the front tires. And then we will take it for its first test drive in a couple of months. And then we still have to do the motor mounts, but clearly those are not a requirement to test drive it. Otherwise it's running here right now. Running great. The fans just kicked on. It's up to operating temp, clearly. I just watched a bunch of dust kick around. It's been a little while since it's been up to temp. I'm gonna go get the tires, get them up here stacked up, and then I'll adjust the bearings. And once I get the bearings adjusted, caps on, I will bring you back for the uh, final lift and drop. There she is, on the ground for the first time in months. Not quite though, we're almost there. I gotta clear this space out, back it on the ground, and then like I said, we'll jack that up, get those tires swapped over too. Those tires seem to spin true when I had them torqued down, so that's good. That's good, that looks good, honestly? With the white wool and the black, it doesn't look bad. I kind of, I kind of don't mind it. I kind of don't mind it. I'm gonna put the the fancy hubcaps on it, but uh, I kind of don't mind it actually. But it's all, it's done. Oh, when we get the fronts on the ground before we jack the front up, once it's at ride height, I'll, I'll bounce on the bumper a few times, get it set. We gotta tighten the all the nuts for the leaf spring. We haven't done any of that. I just left it loose, like hand tight. Cause now that it's at ride height, we will tighten it down good. I can't forget to do that. 
So, look at that, it's on the ground. Oh, I'm so excited this is done. I'm actually gonna drive this tomorrow. Uh, I gotta go to the DMV to uh, do some paperwork. So, I'll uh, use this as the, uh, the mode of transportation, I think. Granted, it drives decent when we test drive it here. Oh, I'm so excited. It's done. I, you know, I'm actually happy. It's done, too. Like, done. Like, it's not something I have to worry about sitting up here in the front of the garage. You know, it's, like, done. That's great. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, the two nuts on both back shackles are done, and the nut and bolt on both fronts are tightened. So, we're all good to go there. Just gotta change front wheels and tires, and then I gotta change into something decent so I'm not, you know, ruining that seat. And then uh, it's time to go for a ride. All right, this is a long time coming. A lot of hours just went into this. Time to go for that test drive. I think everything's good, we got fluids, you know, it's not overheating. It's been running here for an hour. Got all four new tires on it, new wheels. Rear brakes bled, front brakes are good. Front suspension's been tight. Rear suspension's tightened down. Exhaust is up. You know, all brake lights all work, running lights all work. I think it's time to go for a ride. Let me set my drink down. I'm actually starting on a Red Bull here because uh, I gotta do some editing after this and it's 10 at night, so. I'm going to burn the midnight oil for y'all because uh, I've been slacking. Not really. I've been working on stuff like this. But uh, let's flip this off. Uh, remember how to do this. There, they're already all the way up. Let me put the seatbelt on. I haven't driven this thing in months. Remember where all the controls are. Thinks it's 425. That's okay. Roll this window up because we live on a gravel road. We must turn the fans on. We got a quarter tank of gas. That's good enough. I'll probably drive it into town and put gas in it, actually. Uh, how do I... Go like that, there. That should give us some vent and some heat. Well, I'm not going for heat. I'm just going for airflow. Um, is that, what does that do? There we go. Just going for airflow so dust doesn't decide to come in here. Hopefully it doesn't. All right, we're in drive. I've got a check gauges light on because the alternator's low or something. I don't know. Okay, let's go turn. Do I clear? I'm clearing the car. I don't know why there's a check gauges light on. We'll just ignore it. I'm, I checked the gauges. They're there. Okay, it goes away. I think it's a charge light. That's kind of not good. That's a brand new alternator. Wow. New to us. 
Um, first impressions, it feels good. Brakes still work. Let's go this way. You guys get to just see dash for now until we get out to the main road. Uh, it still shifts. It seems to ride okay over the rough road. The gravel road is really rough because we haven't gotten any rain. Uh, transmission works good. Got good oil pressure. We are charging. Gas is, gauge is kind of going up and down as it does because it's a real gauge. Temp gauge looks good. I don't smell dust. Farmers are out burning the midnight oil too. See them out there? They're out plowing fields. Uh, it actually feels really nice going down the road here. Like really, really nice. Um, steering wheel appears straight, which is, I believe, what it was before. So I don't think we're dog tracking or anything. I don't know. I'd have to have somebody drive behind me to really tell. I'll bring you guys back when we get out to the tar road. All right, we made it to the tar road. Everything seems okay. It drove okay fine on the gravel actually so tires need balanced really really bad but it seems to drive okay. Tires definitely need balance, but it doesn't feel you know terrible. It's going down the road straight. It's not pulling or anything. Um, like I said, the steering wheel's right where it was at before. You can't tell. Just a little bit tilted to the right, if I recall correctly, because it's never been aligned. So I bet you the speedo's accurate though too. I can already tell just you know, by driving by feel, which is what I'm doing. The Speedo looks accurate now because we have the right size wheels on it. Uh, yeah, I think mission success. It seems fine. I'm gonna go in and get gas for it. Nothing feels too loose. I'm just gonna drive it and you know, know how it feels, but I do believe that's gonna do it for this series, really, on Blue Van, the 90 Caravan because we finished all the work. I just got to get tires balanced, get it aligned. I'll do that off camera. It is what it is. And then I'm going to drive it. So thank you guys for watching. And I will see you next time on whatever I am working on, which I believe will be Gray Van the 93. We got some videos on that. I mean, I've been done working on that one for like months, but we've got some videos that need to go out on that, at least one. So uh, that'll do it. Thank you all for watching. Well, it's time to put Blue Van away for the winter. We didn't quite get to the point of getting the tires balanced and it aligned. Just ran out of time. But uh, we'll get that done next spring when we get it pulled out. Oh, hello, radio. Um, I don't remember where the hell the lights are. There we are. Uh, but let's see if she'll start. She's been like three days since I run it last.